Colossians 3, chapter 1 through 4. And it reads, so if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not earthly things. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also would appear with him in glory. Let us pray. Father God, I truly do thank you in advance for what you're about to say, what you're about to do, what you're about to reveal, the increase that you have already ordained in righteousness, that as we study your word, you teach us, Father. Make my pen my tongue, a pen of a ready writer, rightly dividing the word of truth that we can receive from you. We can eat from your table. I thank you, Father. In advance, in Jesus' name, we do pray. Let every heart say amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. If you have been raised with him, seek things above. That means if you're a Christian, it means if you're saved, seek things above. One thing that I have observed, observed even in my own life and the life of others, especially since pastoring, self-afflicted failures in life come as a result of not thinking right. Now, all trials don't become, come because of that. Some trials come just because of life. Some of them are the enemy. But most of them that are self-afflicted comes from us not thinking right. Whenever we think wrong, we tend to move into the things of the flesh, right? When we fail to access the realm of heaven in our mind, watch this, we will fail to bring heaven into earth. I say that again, whenever we fail to access heaven in our minds, we fail to bring heaven to earth. In other words, if you don't think heavenly, you're no good earthly. Because whenever, when, whenever we're not, whenever we don't plant our minds in heaven, there's no way we can operate in our purpose on earth. Right? Because the source of our thought life is ordained to be in heaven. And we're going to learn that today. Why is that? We, we can't think how we used to think because we're now new creatures. We can't think old and we're new. When we think old and we new, then it hinders our new self from manifesting in the earth. And our new self is called to bring heaven to earth, right? Through our bearing fruit, through our obedience, through our yielding to the word of God, right? But before we can access heaven in our everyday life, we have to first plant our mind there. You see? Why? Because this world has too much trouble for you to plant your mind here. Let's be honest. Too much trouble here. If you begin to plant your mind here, you're only going to plant your mind in trouble. Therefore, trouble is always on your mind. This is why it's important for believers to govern their life when it comes to other people. The way that God says it. Why? Because it's all targeted right here. Most of the distractions that's going on in our life is to keep us from discipleship. It's to keep us from accessing the things of God. And if we begin to look 
at the things around us and we begin to plan our mind on the things around us, we're going to fail to access heaven to be able to handle the problems that comes up in our everyday life. For example, if something comes to make you angry and upset, if your mind is not planted on heavenly things, you might respond to that in the flesh. And the Bible says that you cannot accomplish God's righteousness in anger. So if you allow anger to lead you instead of peace, love, long suffering, et cetera, et cetera, then guess what's going to happen? You're not going to bring heaven to earth in that area. That means that area that you should be occupying as a believer. Now you're occupying, but you're occupying in the flesh, right? You can't be spiritual without heaven. Write that down. Because we just learned that, we just learned that this morning, that in Romans chapter number 8, Paul said that you are spiritual. And this is what he said, if you have the spirit of Christ, right, you are spiritual. So there's no way to be spiritual without the Holy Spirit. And we know the Holy Spirit comes from where? Heaven. So there's no way we can be spiritual without heaven. There's no way we can walk in the spirit without heaven, right? Our minds, what do our minds do? Our brains do, our consciousness, our thinking, our thought life, it controls this, our activity in the earth. And if we're thinking wrong, then we're acting wrong. But when we plant our minds on things above, we begin to look at things from a what? Heavenly perspective, from a kingdom perspective. Therefore, if we're looking at things from a kingdom perspective, then we're going to respond to it the way that God has ordained it. Another example, a person can, can say the same thing to two different people and each one of them people responds differently. It depends on how they look at it. Amen. It depends on what their perspective of it is. And, and people's perspective comes from their thought life and the way that they think. Right? Remember what I said? Oh, I think this was Wednesday night. I said, what, 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 what law told us to respond to emotions or to express our emotions the way that we express them. In other words, who told you to act the way you act when you get angry? Who, who, who what, what law that come? In other words, do I have to frown when I'm angry? Where did I get that from? Who told me I have to frown when I'm angry? Who told me I have to cry when I'm sad? Who told me that those expressions of emotions match the emotion? If nothing is biblically law or legal to bound me to that, then I have the freedom to change it. In other words, since I have the freedom to change it, when I get mad, I can smile now. Why? Because there's no governing law from God that says I have to frown when I'm angry. <laughs> Too deep for some of y'all. Right? Who said I have to beat somebody up just because they wronged me? When the Bible said that you love your enemies, come on. So, so, so watch this. Watch this. If, 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 if God has not told me to act a certain way based on an emotion, then I have the right to change it. Right? To how God told me to act with. Make sense? That's the authority we walk in. Why? Because we're not bound as slaves to sin. Because we're not under the law. Remember the law? Sin found occasion through the law. So when sin found occasion through the law, sin then, what did Paul say? It's in my body. It's taking control of me. But now Jesus has freed us from that. So now I got the choice to say, hey, how long? I don't have to respond the way sin used to make me respond. Amen. And one of them rights is being able to plant your mind on things above. Let's look at verse one. What it says. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek things above. Right. Why do we have to seek everything above? Why do God wants us to seek things above? Why, why is that something of importance to the believer? Right. Because everything below is perverted. The things that culture itself is perverted. 
it's against God. It's anti-Christ. The things of this world, if you plant your mind on the things of this world, it will slowly draw you away from the things of the kingdom. Amen. You will find yourself the things of the kingdom not being so important because the things that culture exalts will be of importance to you and not the things of the kingdom. Why? Because your mind is there. If you plant your mind on things down here, you're going to be wavered in every doctrine that appears that's not like God. Look at what we're fighting over in our communities. We have Jews against Greeks. We have women against men. Culture, look what culture is doing. As a matter of fact, culture got men against women. Men's role against women's role. When, when you look at it biblically, we all supposed to be yielding to Christ. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Doesn't make sense. Why? Because that's the ways of the world. But when you plant your mind on things above, you're accessing heaven in your thought life and every single thing that happens in your life. Look what the text said. If you've been what? Raised with Christ. So what does that mean to be raised with Christ? Romans chapter 7 explains this clearly, right? Matter of fact, Romans 5 through 8 explains this clearly. Through the Holy Spirit. See, the same Holy Ghost that quickened Jesus from the dead is in you, right? And that same Spirit will also what? Quicken your mortal what? Bodies. See what I'm saying? So that same spirit right there, that said, Gee, Holy Spirit gives us access to heaven. Right? So now that we have access, we should what? Plant our minds there. Because when we plant our minds there, then what that does, initiate faith in our thought life that will cause us to carry out under the power of the Holy Ghost things that we wouldn't be able to carry out before we got saved. So, prime example. If you want to love like Christ, your mind has to be in heaven first. Before your body can demonstrate that. Because that's a heavenly, that's a heavenly attribute. Right? The farther we get away from the ascension of Christ, the less love we see in the earth. It's biblical. It's going to happen. Happening before our eyes. We cannot stop that. But as believers, what we can stop is involving ourselves in that kind of activity. There's no way that you can rule the earth with any other believer with your mind on the earth. You cannot rule what you're in. Say that again. You, you, you cannot govern what has dominion over you. You cannot, you, you cannot have dominion over the earth if you, the earth is, or culture or the world is controlled in the way you think. Think about that. I can't, so, so a lot of us get so caught up in our situation that we can't rule it. It's ruling us. It's not, right? We're not being, so... Heaven should be governing us. Say, heaven should be governing me. But you can't be governed by heaven if your mind is not there. Because you'll be so distracted over this till your mind is there and not there. All right, let's go. Let's keep going. So seek things above where, where Christ is. So we're, we're defining above. Christ is where? Above heaven. Where Christ is and where he's seated at the what? Right hand of God. This is a place of authority. This is a place that, that, that Christ sit that's showing his equality with God. Philippians chapter 2 speaks of this. That, that Jesus didn't find his equality with God something to be exploited. But yet he did what? Humble himself. That means I don't have to come under because I'm equal to you, but I did it out of humility. In love. Amen. Amen. So that should speak to the believer. I don't have, because we love to say this, I'm grown. You don't have to tell me nothing. But, but that show you people that say that, and if you want to say that, that's dangerous because that's not a heavenly language. Right? That's a worldly, I'm grown. When the Bible said that you cannot, that if you want to enter the kingdom of God, you need to be like one of these little children. 
Grown people can't enter. Because when you say you're grown, you're not taking authority of your own life. You're taking authority on your own thoughts. That means you're grown. You're taking care of yourself. God wants you as a child. I need you, daddy. Lead me, daddy. I ask permission from you, daddy. Right? Can't think. Look what the Bible says. Take on the what? Mind of what? Put on the what? Mind of what? Christ. But if your mind is not what Christ is, how can you put it on? And we wonder why there's so much turmoil in our life. And there's so much self-affliction because sometimes God will answer our prayers. And because our, we're not thinking like heaven, we overlook, we overlook the blessings of God and continue to look at the things of the world. And we don't properly steward what God has given us. So we keep praying for what God has already given instead of praying for stewardship. You cannot steward from heaven if your mind is in there. Right? So look at this. Set your mind on things above. That word set means to plant and don't move. Amen? If I set a chair right here, I've planted it there, and it's not going to move unless I pick it up and move. Or someone else. It's not going to move itself. So, so the Bible says, plant your mind on things above. Then it says, not earthly things. So when we, when we, I'm trying to show you, the Bible is showing us how to walk this Christian life out. And it first start in your thinking. The Bible said that, behold, I will give you a new heart. I will take away your old stone, stony hearts as flesh. I will give you a new spirit. I put my spirit in you and I will cause you to obey my statutes. He never said your mind. Though. You got to do that. You have to renew your mind. It's amazing how we want a new life without a new mind. <laughs> right? Don't work like that. Your if you have stinky thinking, you're going to have a stinky life. Amen. It starts in our thought process. So when we arise in the morning, we should rise, rise in heaven. Because that's where our mind is. That's where we're seated at. That's where our position is. Right? We're seated with Christ. We're co-heirs with Christ. See, this is a place of faith. See, see faith says I'm there even my body ain't there yet. Faith makes it not make sense. So if you're trying to live this life of God and it makes sense to you and you don't want to move to it, it makes sense, you will never get it. Because that, if that's the case, faith wouldn't be needed. Because you can use your five senses to obtain understanding. Faith say, I believe beyond my understanding. This is why so many people fall away from the faith because they was never in the faith because they're not believing by faith. Because if you believe by faith, you wouldn't try to understand everything about God. You can't understand everything about God. If you could understand everything about God, he would not be God. If you knew everything there is to know about God, that means that he would not be God. It's about faith. Now, this plan your mind on things above sound real crazy apart from faith, because how can I get to heaven? Yet alone my thought life. Let's keep reading. Watch this. Mm -hmm. He said, for you died. Right? We, 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 what, what did Jesus say? If you want to come after me, take, deny yourself, take up your cross and do what? Follow me. Look what it say. Taking up your cross signifies death. Jesus said, follow him, follow him well to the grave and to the resurrection. Amen. And to the ascension is coming. Mm -hmm. I ain't here yet, but you're going to ascend and descend. Come on in here, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? We're going to ascend and descend. Mm -hmm. We're coming back. But. In a glorified body to rule with Christ in eternity, the whole universe. I, now, this is me. The Bible ain't showing me. This is me. I just don't believe that all these planets are here for nothing. We're going to rule some. Starting on earth. Now, the Bible do say that. Right? It 
Say you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Look at that. So your very life is hidden where? With Christ in God. That's right. Baby got that one. She said, that's God. Right. It's hidden in God. Where Christ is. See, your life is not hidden here. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> See, that sounds foolish. That, that, I'm here, though. I'm right here. No, you're not in faith. You're there. In faith, your mind is there. So when the world comes up against you, you, I ain't down here no way. Why you think the Bible says there's, there's a soldier involve themselves in civilian matters? Our matters are not civilian. They're of heaven. We're governed by heaven. Right? We think along the lines of heaven. That's what makes us ambassadors. I'm trying to help you with something. Let's look at this from an earthly realm. Okay, an ambassador don't stay here. An ambassador stays in a country that he's not from. He lives in an embassy. And that embassy is governed by the rules of the country it comes from. That's why if you're in a foreign country and you're in trouble, they tell you to get to the where? Embassy. Because the embassy is governed by a whole different type of law than the country that they're from. That's why we're in this world, but we're not. What? Come on, we get it. Why? Because we're ambassadors of Christ. I have a friend of mine who calls the church building Heaven's Embassy. Because in a way it is. Right? That's why this church is called Ambassadors Assembly. Because we are ambassadors that assemble together for discipleship. To learn about Christ. To exercise our gifts until we all come into the unity of the what? Faith. Right? See, we're, we're talking about government mandates here. It's, it's things that you have nothing to do with that God has ordained. You just access by faith. So we're ambassadors. And that ambassador, it, 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 it governs itself according to the will of the country that it, it's from. So the ambassador of the United States to China lives in an embassy in China, if China allows it, and this ambassador speaks on behalf of the United States of America as well as ambassadors of other countries. i turn you to something. You could go look at it on TV. Right before, right after Russia in, invaded Ukraine, they tried to come to the table and negotiate, but notice who you didn't see at that table. You didn't see... The president of Ukraine, you didn't see Putin, nor did you see our president. But you see ambassadors or representatives sitting at the tables negotiating on the behalf of the country they come from. And watch this. They couldn't say, they can't say anything that the country that they come from didn't tell them to say. It's illegal. So how do we apply that here? Think about it. If... Our ambassador, the United States ambassador, is in another country, but their minds, their understanding, and the laws that's governing them turns into the laws and the thinking of the country they're in and not the one they come from. Can they really represent the United States like that? If they have no, if the ambassador of the United States have no communication with this country, aka prayer, <laughs> for the believer. No communication. If they hear nothing, what can they really say? If they're governing themselves by the laws of the country they come from, they're illegal. Why? Because they're not there as their citizens. You're still a United States citizen. You're that rebel. So what, well, how does this look for the believer? I'm going to tell you. We're not from this world. We're in this world. The Bible calls us ambassadors of Christ. That means we're in a country that we're not from. And watch this. We still have to govern ourselves according, out of respect. But our laws, our rules, our mandate, our purpose for that ambassador, the source is here. So for you as an ambassador, watch this. The way you think, the way you act, the way you conduct yourself, comes, your culture comes from the citizenship that you have in the country you come from. 
So if you're here, you're here for a purpose. And when you speak, you're speaking as a representative of heaven. Therefore, you speak the will of God where? In the earth from heaven. In that country, but from your country. See how they go? So, this is why we plant our mind on things above. Not on things in the earth. Because we come from there and we represent there. See that? Watch, let's, 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 let's look at this. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. See that? So, so now you died. There, there's, there, there, when you died, your life is hidden with Christ in God. Why? Because the old you died. The old you was in bondage. Look what Romans chapter 7 says. And it used an illustration of marriage. As long as that man is alive, that wife is bound to that man. Now, when that man dies, she's no longer married to that man. She can go to another. Same way. Once, once you died, you are no longer bound to that woman. A.K.A. law. You die. That, that law no longer governs you. You're, you're being broken free. It's like a woman whose husband died. Now she's no longer bound to that man. She can now go choose somebody else. So it's the same thing. You're no longer bound because you're dead. Now when you raise yourself or when you were risen in Christ, now you're no longer bound to that law. Now you're in Christ. Y'all see that? It's legal now. All these are legal terminologies. Look at this. So number five say, therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature. Now, that makes sense because I'm going to show you how to walk in freedom. This is, again, this isn't work based. This is something that happened. And Paul is showing you what happened. You died. You're hidden in Christ. Now you can put to death the things that belong to your old self. That's no longer yours no more. Right? If, if you was in the street and, and you, you dipped and dabbed in things and, you know, your life wasn't okay. Once you're saved, you got, you got the ability to put to death all that because it don't, no longer belongs to the new you. It belongs to the old you. And the old you is dead. See, look at the authority in the text right here, man. This is authority. He, he says, therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature. At one time, you couldn't put nothing to death. Now you can put to death. That's not work-based. That's faith-based. Every morning you wake up, you, I'm dead and I'm alive in Christ. The old me is dead. The new me is alive in Christ. That's faith. But a lot of times we want to bring work base to church and we've realized work base don't work because you've been doing it for 30 years and nothing has changed. <laughs> Where's your faith? Faith said this is true. So when faith says this is true, you govern your mind according to that your body can follow. Right? So now you can put to death what belongs to our earthly nature, which is sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. He said you once walked in these things when you were living in them. Notice the past tense. At once you walk. This is why we need to stop telling believers they are. You're not a liar. You used to be. You're not a fornicator. You used to be. You're not a trickster. You used to be. Look at the terminology. But I did it. Okay, you, you, you're a Christian and you, that's not you. That's not your identity. Yeah, you did it, but that's not your identity. When you really receive that and stop looking at what you're doing and start looking at who you are, then you'll start doing who you are. Amen. That's the issue. We're so bound over sin that that's all we talk about in the church. What about I'm the righteous of God in Christ Jesus? Why my focus got to be who I was? Come on in here, church. 
The Bible is saying put the, put the depth of deeds of your old self. So why my old self got to be the subject matter every time I come into the temple? I came to be the subject matter of who I am in Christ Jesus. Right? But, but Pastor, I, I messed up a couple of days ago. That's just, like, that's just like me saying I messed up a shower so I'm not a contractor no more. You know in construction when we're building buildings, we have to tear up stuff and redo it all the time even though it's new. Somebody laid out the door and it's six inches this way, tie the hell down, move it over. We don't get fired off a job and, and, and I don't get my license taken because I had to fix something. Think about it. So why is it every time we making a mistake or we make a mistake, we tend to act like, well, our license, we can't build no more. No, it, it don't work like that. You are who principle says you are when you receive Jesus Christ. Point blank, period. And when we start living like that, things will get better for us. Come on, let's finish this out. Verse 7, and you once walked according, walked in these things when you were living in them, but now put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices and put on the new self. Look at, look at the authority right there. He didn't say do. He say put on. You know, we've been dealing with this do and present, right? This do and offer. Now, look at look how the scripture telling you. It say now put away. Because you have put on. You put on. You put away the old, now you put on. That's a place of authority. Now you have the ability to, look, look what the Bible says, cast all your cares, lay aside every weight. That's authority. Right? Look what the Bible telling you. You are being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of your creator. So what did he say? He said, put away all this. Do not lie to one another. And the reason you shouldn't lie to one another because you put, you've taken off your old self. With its practices. And have put on the new self. And this is how that looks. You are being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of your creator. So look what the Bible says about spiritual warfare. Our weapons of warfare are not carnival, mighty through God for the pulling down of stronghold, casting down every what? Imagination, mind games, imagination, and every high thing that do what? Acknowledge itself against the what? Knowledge of Christ. This is the place of discipleship. So the enemy come to distract you from discipleship, from the knowledge of Christ. This is what spiritual warfare, that's why we pull down these strongholds. And look what he said, you are being renewed in the knowledge according to the image of your creator. In Christ there is no Greek and Jew. Circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, all this slave and free. And I want to close right there. That right there should bring correction to us. Why? Because we're living in an age where everything, religions are, are it's division in religion, division between men and women, divisions against races. But right here it says in Christ there is no Jew, no Greek, no male, no female. There's an external equality that comes from your heaven being planted, your mind being planted in heaven. See, we're in battle. We don't govern ourselves like the world. My mind is there. Therefore, there's no Jew. Or no, somebody said, well, what should we say about it? I ain't got nothing to say about nothing that's going on other than there's no Jew, no Gentile in Christ. I don't look at people, oh, that's a Jew. Oh, that's a Gentile. That's a white man. Oh, that's, I ain't in all that. Why? Because does a soldier involve himself in civilian matter? My mind is planted on things above. So no matter what culture brings, I'm going to speak heaven to it. Amen. 
No matter what reveals itself in this world, if your mind is in heaven, you speak heaven to it. You walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Your eyes are here. Close them. <laughs> walk by faith. Not literal, you don't want to run into something, but you know what I mean. In other words, blind your eyes to the stuff you see that brings you torment. Amen. Amen. It's that simple. You don't need the oil. You don't need, you know what I'm saying? All the, you need to plant your mind on things above Amen. where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of the Father. And watch your life be a little better. Amen? How many want peace? Plant your mind on things above. How, how many want unity in, in your life and, and, and in your friendships and in your relationship? Plant your mind on things above. How many, how many people in here really want, really want to access that favor? That, 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 that peace, that anointing that God has got on your life. How many people really want the proper zeal in God? Well, you're not weighed down and you're not so, you, 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 how many people tired of, it look like you got the, you're weighed down trying to get the prayer and you ain't got to go nowhere to pray. <laughs> but you're trying to get that. Why? Your mind ain't in heaven. Come on, man, your mind in heaven. If your mind planted in heaven, you're going to be full of joy all the time. You're going to be just like little baby, just walking around Y'all ever looked at children? They have, uh, they're carefree. Why? Because they're not troubled by the world. <laughs> You're troubled. You're troubled. The children here. <laughs> that child right there. She don't know nothing about the war going on. And we can call that because a child is ignorant. They going, but, 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 but look at the revelation in that. Why are you even, why is your emotions wrapped up in it? Why is your countenance? Because of worldly things. People. Right? That's why the Bible talks about being unequally yoked. That's why the Bible talks about, you know, you, 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 you can't befriend the world. Why? Because the mind, the, the mind of the world is where? <laughs> so if you could think about that, if you connect with somebody who's worldly and their mind is on the world, then y'all conversations ain't going to make sense. Because your conversation is spiritual. I'm looking at this thing from a spiritual. And that person looking at this thing. Why your friend? That, that, why, see, see, a lot of trouble I got into because of friends. And, and friends called me to do fleshly things because I agreed with them. But, 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 but if I would have just stayed with somebody that's kingdom, I wouldn't have got in that car. I wouldn't have went to jail. I wouldn't you know, I went from the church. I left. So now I got to come in agreement with people whose mind is not in heaven. But see, when you yoke up with kingdom people, right, conversation going to be different. Way of thinking is going to be different. Have you ever hooked up with your brother or your sister like you got a charge? It's because they're in a the vein. They're in a heavenly vein, right? Y'all, y'all. But you ever got with somebody who, who hooked up with somebody, had a conversation with somebody who's just worldly? Everything that come out their mouth is just worldly. Right? It's not a good place to be. Right? It may be fun for a little while. But when the thrill is gone, <laughs> you feel me? So what we got to do, we got to plan our mind on things above, man. Make heavenly decisions. Right? Because a lot of our trouble comes from self-affliction. Comes from choices we make. Right? When we think heaven, we choose heavenly. Write that down, and I'm going to leave you with that. When you think heaven, when your mind is in heaven and you're thinking in heaven, then guess what? Your life, decisions become heavenly. Amen? When your mind is on the things of this world, the people of this world, the values of this world, what culture deems that success, you'll find yourself never being content because you will never get enough. Right? 
and you'll be distracted in your very life and you, you, you won't walk in your purpose. Amen. So what are we going to do? Plan our mind on things above. Amen. Amen. So we don't carry out the things of the flesh. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let us pray. We're going to be dismissed. Mm -hmm.